Hello there and welcome back to Sherlock Holmes, Devil's Daughter. We're in our first case, which is called Pray Tell. So, last time we were approached by a young boy who is missing, his father's gone missing. Three weeks he's been gone missing, he's, well, three weeks he's been missing for. Police say that he's just abandoned his kid. The kids obviously well looked after. Well, I well looked after considering the poor. You could tell that he's you know a little bit malnutrition, but his clothes are in good upkeep, and he's been taught to read and stuff like that. So his parents definitely care about him, because you wouldn't spend effort and money on him if you didn't care about your child. It's just how it was back then. Wouldn't waste time on them. So anyway. Was, so we decided to do some investigation. Found out that his dad was called George Hurst. And now Mr. Hurst apparently had a wind of a special job. He called it a special job. No idea really what that is yet. We did track down the guy who was giving, giving out the jobs. Now one of our urchin kids... Busy tear them, which was fun actually, it was very good. Little stealth section, very good. Tracked them back to a house, found out whose house it is by the coat of arms, which we've just found out. It's a guy called Lord Marsh. So, we're going to pick up where we left off, which was with us heading out to go and visit Mr. M uh, Mr. Marsh, Lord Marsh. Got to get it right, I'm British. Lords are lords. Lord Marsh. So we are going to jump straight back in now. We're going to go and visit Mr. Lord Marsh. I will say it's Mr. Lord. I get shot, man. I will. Right. Enjoy, guys. Enjoy. Right. Uh, God, I fucking love Toby. Right, are we off? Ooh. Does that lead to the attic? Well, that is an attic. Alright. Can we knock on any of these doors, actually? Can we knock on our neighbour? No. Not even the cupboard under the stairs. Right. Let's go find ourselves a way to... Mr. Marsh, let's go head off. Let's grab that. You're my dude. Uh, Marsh's house, please. I like this. I'm interested in what some of the other cases are going to be. I'm going to say this seems very basic, like a basic case, like an introduction case. But I imagine it's probably going to have some twists and turns. Holmes, about Caitlin. Oh, yes? Caitlin. What about Caitlin? She has grown up, hasn't she? Don't you think it's time to... to tell her? Tell her to what? Tell her what, Watson? Tell her what exactly? About her father. Never. Absolutely never. Do you hear me? Holmes, okay. you were responsible for the death of her father. You owe her the truth. She is old enough now. I would lose her. Can't you see that? She must never know. Watson, is that clear? Holmes. It won't and can't happen. I get the feeling it's going to happen. I just get the feeling it's going to happen. Um, knock, knock. Uh, come in, please. Okay. Please don't shoot me. I'm entering the house. Good day, gentlemen. Oh, Welcome hello. to my home. How may I help you? Good day to you, Lord Marsh. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Let's, uh, let's do the thing. Let's do the thing. Right, his eyes. Uh, not lack of sleep. You wouldn't get eyes like that from lack of sleep. Feels unwell. Uh, got anything around here? Got quite a few of these to do on this one. 
Uh, ring. Man of Wealth. Anything on your fingernails? Uh, blanket. I'm going to say he's ill, keeping his, maintaining his body temperature, which would pair well with the the feels unwell part for his eyes. Anything on the hand? No. Anything else? I think right. we're looking at we're looking over here. Uh, Devon's vegetable painkiller, manufactured by Devon's and Bolton, Montreal. Twenty-five cents. Twenty. Sorry, twenty-five. Whatever it is, shillings? 25 shillings? Maybe. Anyway, we're gonna have a look at it. <laughs> Pills. Strong painkillers. Okay. Uh, got anything on here? Ooh. I'm looking at this guy now. Alright. Oh, hello. So I just need to turn my head to read this properly. <laughs> Lord March's state of health. His temperature was higher than usual. He was experiencing a tightness in the chest. He's definitely unwell. And the shortness of breath during the day. I recommend increasing his daily dose of painkillers appointments. 1600 hours meeting. Lord Marsh and Lord Collins remind Lord Marsh of this meeting and order a cab. Okay. Lord Marsh is, I like that, cooking recipe. <laughs> Lord Marsh's personal assistant. So you're, if you're his personal assistant, uh, broad motif, member of a hunting club, and we've also got a stethoscope, which means he's a physician as well. Anything on your face? Hold on, that's the guy, that's the guy we tailed, he's just got, doesn't have any whiskers anymore. That's got to be him. Alright, let's have a look at Re Reuben Fisher. Okay, so that's Reuben Fisher. Reuben Fisher is a young man of 25 and already a confident physician. He is well educated, mannered and a member of a hunting club. His clothes indicate that he's financially wealthy. Reuben Fisher is not only a physician, he is also Lord Marsh's personal assistant. It's weird to be a physician and a personal assistant at the same time. I don't know if that was a done thing back then, was it? I don't know. Right, let's look at Lord Marsh. Lord Marsh is a wealthy man who holds a high position in society, indicated by his expensive clothes and a valuable gold ring. He has de dedicated his life to helping the poor. He is ill, therefore he is covered with a blanket, despite the fact that it's quite warm inside the room. Right. I hope we're not disturbing are we interrupting? you. You are with your physician? I yes, this is, is Dr. Know. Reuben Fisher. But no, please, I'm intrigued by your visit, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to hear it. The last thing I'd wish is to upset the patient. Lord Marsh, can I just say that I admire all of your efforts in assisting... So the how's he? London. There's a lot of stuff uh, going on, yes. like for the poor. It is a war that we must fight on our streets and now too from my home. You must surely have noticed those bags full of items, so a lot clothing of them. and books for the unfortunate. That is inspirational. Is he dying? Uh, humble level, is he dying and he's just he's getting rid of his wealth? In need. I Paying for all this stuff? I could be of some assistance? I don't see why not. I already have the valuable assistance of Dr. Fisher, who happens to be my personal physician. I recognize your it's face. curious. <laughs> your face seems familiar to me, Doctor. Oddly, I'm associating it with white. Very chapel. subtle. Very well subtle. Well done. You are right. I do occasionally frequent a few hostelries over there, would you believe it? <laughs> not that I am a drinker. But there, just uh, as sorry a with the man, I can approach the other fellows to see if they might be interested in a special job. A special, special job. job? May I ask what you're referring to? Yes. Certainly. Since Lord what Martin kind of special job we're talking about here? In 1889, he foresaw that such people would need an occupation of some kind. And right. so, with what or occupation or what we're talking about? We propose these opportunities to work with Lord Marsh. It offers the less fortunate a chance to help make London a better place. That's remarkable. That's yes, very nice. Indeed. 
In order to truly see, one requires vision, yes? But also insight. And Lord Marsh has believed this since he was a child. Oh, oh, Dr. Fisher makes it all sound so romantic. Let's close this topic. Okay. That, see, we've got information there, but we're not, uh, not any really good information. I'm very intrigued by that, because you just mentioned a special job, but you didn't mention... You mentioned the special job, you mentioned why they offer special jobs and the education. We didn't actually say what the job entailed. Forgive me. Like, at all. You completely glossed over that, and that raised my suspicions. Dr. Watson's assistance. That is kind of you, but I feel confident that I can provide Lord Marsh with the care that he requires. How long have you been like this, my lord? Well, wouldn't you never... Fine, Dr. Watson. Don't fuss. It's only influenza. I'll be better in a few days. I can feel it already. Painkiller. Hold on. Painkiller. If it was that, you know, if it was only for influenza, you wouldn't need fucking really strong painkiller, would you? In that case, why are you taking such powerful painkillers? Excuse me, what do you mean? Mr. Holmes is referring to the pills on your yeah. table. I'm sorry, but that's a medical confidentiality. Oh, really? Hold on, X, what's that? Uh, character portraits. I don't know why I think you took that one. Alright, never mind. Uh, Dr. Fisher stated he adopted a disguise in order to offer positions of work to London's poor folk. Right. Let me as well check these while we're in here. An open package of powerful painkillers, kind of pack of sulfur matches, drawing a coat of arms made of other weekends. And not leaving that one, so let's go there. Uh, can we have a, can I have a look around? Spike my title, yes. I have to share my home with these bags full of food for the poor. Get a feeling you're not, that's Lord not Marsh influenza. That can help all these poor people. Right, let's have a look at these. Uh, distribute for paupers, Whitechapel High Street, London. The provision dealing with the paupers of Whitechapel. Okay, so that's a special education. What was that? Special education program. It's got a the seal on there. Dealing with... uh, what are you? London Hospital, Lord Whitechapel Road. even helps hospitals. Watson. I've never seen so many provisions for the poor, and certainly not in a lord's house. Lots of things we can leave table for it now. It appears that Lord Marsh spent so, a great deal of his money on aiding the poor. It's a lot of money to spend. Are you boys' orphanage, Doctor Bernardo's home, eighteen Stepney Causeway, London. Humanitarian aid for an orphanage. Uh, Lambeth Workhouse, Renfrew Road. So hey, these are all for Lambeth Workhouse. These are all over London. It's extremely honourable to devote one's whole life to assisting the poor. I mean, it's a nice thing to do. Bags full of food. But you're, I'm, I'm always a pessimist, a little bit of a pessimist. I'm wondering why he's doing it. It's, it's some time. ulterior motive. All uh, right, so let's have a look with the. Can we see anything? Secret in here. Nothing yet. Alright, so let's check the table. Alright, plant note. Uh, what's this? Who? Picture. Our quarter main club to celebrate our horseback riding, exploration, and hunting. Lord Marsh, hunting with his friends. Ah. My dear comrades, Lord Collins and Lord Harrington. Lord Collins and Lord Harrington. If it wasn't for this godforsaken English malady, I'd be with those rapscallions right now. I'm All sure. Due time, my lord. Which one of these? Last Newspaper. year, three orphans were put through, put through medical, medical college. college. Oh, damn. Thanks to Lord Marsh and the special education Did program, wrong. a great many poor people will have a second chance in life. Okay. Oh, we've got RB. Does that mean something? Ooh, some papers documented with document with seal. I guess we're looking at that one. D 
Dear Lord Marsh, here's a list of selected participants for the special education program in October. It looks to be a very promising event. I'm looking forward to it. Patrick Tanner, Thomas Kelly, John Strawbridge, William Thatcher, Reginald Staple. Hold on. There was a Strawbridge. It went missing, didn't it? John Str Strawbridge. I've seen this name before. It was on a missing persons poster. It was. That's very weird. Why is his name on a missing oh, persons poster? Why has he gone any missing? Any ideas to the number of people who might owe you their lives? Oh, I'm don't very fucking intrigued me, by this Holmes. now. But indeed, these people have become like a family to me. That would be a fairly large family, I imagine. <laughs> yes, yes really. I think it this is. would be longer than any of your short stories. As for how large, well, Fisher is the one who keeps record. Might we take a glance at the list? I regret that is impossible. It is confidential. confidential. I stand firm upon that point, Mr. Holmes. I quite understand. Why is it confidential? We'll most certainly send a donation towards your educational program. I shall take my leave then. I thank you both and I wish you all the very best, gentlemen. Likewise, Mr. Holmes. That's very suspicious. I've got more suspicions now. Oh, God, hold on. Why? Is that there? Okay. Shit. Uh, I don't even know. Even I no idea what we're doing with this one. Are we making connections? These two together? Yes. Okay. So we've got a little thing there. Are these connected or not connected? Not connected. The special job mentioned by George Hurst is not connected with the special education program. Alright, so we get a choice here. Okay. I think I get this. Connection. George Hurst's special job and Lord Marsh's special education program are somehow connected. I think they are connected. It makes sense that we'll be connected. And so I can't make any more connections right now. Alright. Interesting. That's an interesting feature, that. Holmes, sorry, Watson, believing. Um, let's go back. Should we go back there? I don't know if we're supposed to be going back home or if we're going somewhere else. Should maybe go and see. I wonder, can we see anything there? My archive. I can always. Yeah, so we can't interact with anything in there yet. Okay. A map of London and its surroundings. Could be useful. Could be. Right, hold on. I think I've come the wrong spot. So if we... Let's have a look. Nope. Always hit the wrong one. Oh, well, there we go. I do need to go see Tom. In 1889, Lord Marsh co-founded the Special Education Programme for the lower classes. It could be that George Hurst mentioned something about this to his son, Tom. Alright. A uh, list of names. And then the Quartermain Club picture. Okay. Right, so we're going to go see Tom. I made a detour. Excuse me, guys. Excuse me guys. I like all the moving parts in this. I'm really enjoying this. Just the deduction. Uh hello kid. Mr. Holmes, do you have any news about my father? Tom, I don't know, Tom, I don't not think so. so. Fast. I wanted to ask you if you remember your father mentioning anything about a special education program. An education program? No. He only talked about a special job. What's this box, Tom? I say, where did the box oh, yeah. come from? I just found it, Mr. Holmes. It was ever so well hidden. I've no idea why. Well done, my boy. Where did you find it? Very I'm intrigued to where he found it. Let's have a look at it. Uh, sewing machine oil. This oil can also be used on weapons. 
Oh, hold on. Is there a weapon involved here? A ramrod to clean a rifle. Okay, so we'll have a key. Nothing to see about the key. And have a what looks like a medal. Just we press Wolfjack. Wolfjack looks like a military badge. Okay, military badge. Tom, does your father own a rifle? A rifle? No. If he had, he would have shot at me. Would he? I'm sure that he wouldn't have shown it you. I need to find this rifle. I hope you'll find my father soon. Ooh, hold on. Uh, anything else within this pocket? Let's have a look at the pocket. The bucket with a rag in it. Is this oil? This scrap of cloth was used to oil a firearm. Why is? Tom, does your father have any other property? No. Well, at least I don't think okay. so. Okay. I have to take Toby. He'll take a sniff of the oil and we'll find that rifle. Ooh, we're gonna go get Toby. Oh my god, get to play with the dog. Do we get to play with the dog? Right, thank you, kid. Uh, stay put, I'll be back. I'm just gonna go and get Toby. Right, before we grab Toby, we're gonna have a look. Uh, Wolf Jack. Uh, badges, it's a medal, so it's obviously bad on, on the badges. Wolf Jack's just sweet pressed. Yep. This is the one. A wolf jack is a half wolf, half jackrabbit. Sounds like an interesting animal. It was used by the Lovant Scouts as a self descriptive nickname. The Lovant Scouts formerly became the British Army's first marksman unit. So he's a, he got a sniper missile. He's, he's a sniper. Here it is. Does that mean. Car. Can't be. There was a guy at the beginning in like open and cut scene. He obviously had a rifle and he was taking shots at Sherlock. I'm thinking it might have been Hurst. But that would mean he's alive and why would he be alive? I'm hoping he's alive. Just for the kids' sake. Very interesting. Alright. I have to bear that one in mind. On the other hand, if he was a sniper, especially in the wolf jacks, he wouldn't really have missed, would he? He would have been a good, you know, would have been a good shot. All right, Toby. Come on, Toby. It's time for you to earn your keep. Let us go. Oh my God, I love him so much, Toby. I fucking Watson, love you, Toby. I prefer to visit Lord Marsh. I'm worried about the condition of his health. Okay. Are you going to go visit Marsh? Well, I'm taking Toby. I don't know where you are, Toby, but I'm we're going. Toby, we're leaving. Let's get ourselves some dog on. Let's get some dogs on the go. Oh, good. Oh my god, has he got a jacket on? Has he got a jacket on in that picture? I love it. <laughs> right. Head back to her house. A royal sniff. And find it, boy. Find it. Search, Toby. Search. Oh my god! We're getting a place, Toby! <gasps> oh, look at the fucking waggy tail! Oh god. Right, come on, Toby. Oh my god, a little... Toby, I love you. I can't believe we get the players. <laughs> this is class. I love it. Right, let's follow this scent. We're following the green scent. Sure not follow me. Oh god, Toby. Toby's the best dog. And let's not go near the thingy guy. Uh, left or right? Let's try left first. 
scent and the oil. Building in here? I suppose there would be oil in the in a tool shed, wouldn't there? It's only a garden shed, let's go on. Right. So that makes sense that there will be oil in the tool shed because for the tools. It's not somewhere where you would hold hide a rifle, would it? Uh, let's just go on. There's dust to run back. Okay, so that's a dead end. Right, left. Oh, there'll be short little fucking stubby little legs. Uh, right. This is traveling around here. It's gotta be. It's gotta be down here. Gotta be. What's in there? Interesting. Very interesting. Thank you, Toby. Well, the key works. So, Hearst definitely has something down here. Let's go into the creepy basement. What else have we got down here? What? I wonder what this is actually for. People use this cellar for storage. Alright, so it's a cellar underneath. Nothing that could interest me. Is it on cellar underneath the whole block? So, it's a shared cellar for everyone who lives in this area? That's an interesting concept. Uh, oh, door. Just some old things. Okay, so nothing in there. Check all these doors, shall we? It's not here. Can we actually look around? I should really be looking around, shouldn't I? Can we? Oh, we can. So we can zoom around just a little bit. There's a door on the back side there. Isn't old it? things. Wonder where that other door leads. Anything? Oh, got a bucket, some barrels. Ordinary storage. Wooden junk. A lot of wood. People storing a lot of wood junk. Check this one. Uh, just rubbish. I'm just rubbish. Well, another man's rubbish is one man's treasure. I'll just leave this one. Oh, hello. We have pictures. Stop the war. We have a bag. That's definitely a picture of Tom's photo. Tom. Let's try to get inside. Oh, okay. So, are we lock picking? <laughs> Use the correct lock picks to lift the lock plates and create an unobstructed path to the warden pin. Uh, go one. Okay. So does those count as all right I think I get I think I get that we use one there because it was only one little like lift thing one one peg to lift it like lift it up and over I think two must be two and the three and four you must have to pick the right one that's interesting that's an interesting concept all right, sorry, we're just gonna. I know I'm harping on about this. Right, what's this? We're gonna search this room. Epping Forest. A map of Epping Forest. It's a big ass forest, though. Uh, what are you? Letter. Dear George, I do understand you, it's, and it's so sad. Same as you, I can't find a job, not even the smallest thing. My children have nothing to eat. When I try to find anything. The bosses just say that they don't want wounded people working for them. Our military service means nothing. Our country used us in a war, but now it has abandoned us. Nobody cares. Your friend, Jack. Let's have a look at that. Right, just get rid of these. Okay, what's this one? Order. By Her Royal Majesty Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. 
I, Frederick Russell Burnham, Major of the British Army, declare that the country extends its gratitude to George Hurst, an honourable soldier of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, for his valiant military service. The British Army hereby awards him the Distinguished Conduct Medal and retires him due to the injuries sustained while in duty. Major Frederick Russell Burnham. So he was discharged from the army for being injured. So he's an army guy. Which means he definitely knows how to shoot. Uh, is it Sav Sauvage? Savage. Soft point. Winchester repeating rifle model. 363s. Two left this in. This case must have been full of cartridges. Left two in. Interesting. What's this? What do we have here? Ooh, special education program. News clippings on lords in the education program. Why are they here? It is interesting. Why? Wow. This looks like a prep room for something. What the hell is this guy into? Rifle. Prep for stuff. He's anti-war. Why is he looking for hunting stuff? Lord Marsh, in association with his friends Lord Harrington and Lord Collins, is the co-founder of the Special Education Programme, in assisting the poor to build better lives and more certain futures. These three gentlemen surely help lift the level of our struggling society. What else we got on the table here? So we've got a letter, we've got a group of names. Check this out first. Dear Tom, if you're reading this letter, then it means that I'm dead. I'm so sorry that things had to end up this way, but I had no other choice. You have to know that. Okay. You didn't give it to a kid, though. You're a very smart boy, and I'm so proud of you. One day you'll understand and you'll forgive me. Son, I love you so much. Don't despair. Try to be happy for you. Try to be happy, for you'll grow up to be a man someday, and sooner than you think. You won't be alone. Me and your mum will be looking over you from heaven. Your loving father. You know what? It's gonna sound really strange. It's such a breath of fresh air to see the word mam. M A M, mam, not mom, not mum. It's mam. <laughs> That's how it's set up where I live. <laughs> it's such a breath of, breath of fresh air to see that in text in a game. Your loving father. Okay, so we've got a. Essentially, no, it's like your suicide note. But I don't think he didn't give it to, he didn't leave it where the kid could find it. Because the kid would find the key, we'd never know what this key was for, and he would never get in here, and he wouldn't even, wouldn't even have gotten in this door that where we lockpicked. That tells me he's still alive. Let's compare Check this, this out. list with the evidence that we found earlier. Does it just have names on it? This is the list of selected participants for October's special education program. Right, so we'll compare these two According lists. According to this poster, John Strobridge is missing. Right, Let's so compare them with people from Hearst documents. Okay, so we're looking for Patrick Tanner, Edgar Evans, Edgar Bristol, David Papillon, Daniel Smith, Daniel Jones, Robert Taylor. Robert Brown, Thomas Kelly, Thomas Kelly. This man appears in both documents. Okay. This is very. Is there anyone in? William Thatcher. Oh, William Thatcher's on there as well. I almost missed that one. William Thatcher's there. Uh, Robert Brown isn't on there. Sorry. Robert Taylor, written, so we're looking at uh, John Straw Strawbridge, Patrick Tanner, and Reginald Steele. Patrick Tanner. He's on the list. Reg Reginald Staple. You're there. And John Strawbridge. But they're all on the list. All the people in Marsh's document are marked and dated in George Hurst's files. Group S, though. What's Group S? 
So they're all going to be there, 17th of October. So that's this, this one here. Okay. That's very fucking interesting. Let's, can we piece some stuff together? Um, right. Newspaper article. Road March Special Kitchen Room found George Hurst Seller. Special job. Right, wound. Missing. Oh, no, that's Scouts, sorry. That's an obvious one, that one, fucking hell. George Hurst belonged to the Lovat Scouts Marksman Unit. Right, so let's have a look. We wrote a farewell letter to Tom. Her special job. George Hurst knew that this is where we have a choice in this one. George Hurst knew that he stood no chance of returning from his special job, therefore, he wrote a farewell letter to Tom. And last chance, George Hurst wrote a farewell letter but didn't give it to Tom. There's a chance that he's still alive. I'm going to see a last chance. You got a feeling he's a chance that he's still alive. Uh, missing her special job. It's going to be a little bit out of left field here. Do you think this quarter main club, this hunting club, are hunting people? Is that something that would happen? Would the hunt, would a group of. I don't know why I'm saying this, but because of course someone, some rich twat would do it. Sneak into Marsh's house. Sneak into Lord Marsh's house and look at additional information about a special education program. Right, so that's what we're going to do. Alright. Okay. Let's go and find out more about this special uh, special education program. Because this seems really fucking dodgy to me. The bunching people up, the hiring people, the bunching people up into groups. Hey, Toby, you good Great boy, Toby. Toby. Best nose in the British Empire. Come on, then, my dude. Let's go. Come on, Toby. Right, let's go back to Lord Marsh's house. Don't think we. Do we need to take Toby home? Or are we alright just. Yeah, I think we're alright to go straight for Lord Marsh's. Are you following Toby? I'm gonna assume he is. <laughs> Old Tabard pub. Right, so let's go straight to. Hello. Um, we go straight to Marsh's house, or do I have to go back to two twenty one? We're gonna have a look. We're gonna see. I think we'll be all right just going straight to the house. Ah, yes, we are. We're all right because we're new. Holmes, what are you doing here? What are you planning? Um, a mission of my own. We're gonna have a bit you of a we're gonna have a bit of a play around. Conscientious doctor, while I sneak inside Marsh's house. That's the only way of helping little Tom. <laughs> so that was just a yeah, whatever. Right, so let's can't go in through the front door because obviously that's stupid. I have the back door. And there's no, I don't think there's anyone patrolling around the outside. It's a nice little yard, though. Got a vibey plant. It must be nice in the uh, in the spring. Can we look through the window? The window is firmly shut. Ah, didn't well plan to look through the window, not open the window, but okay. Let's go through the door. 
Uh, okay. Oh shit. All right. Uh, lockpick. Use the correct lockpicks to lift the lock plates and create an unobstructed path for the warp in. Right. So we're going to test this out. So we're going to go one. Wise remove. Right. So we'll put that one back. Get a two, because that next one's a two pin. There we go. So it is. So use. It's in wedges. Makes total sense. Right, let's go in. How can I help you? Oh, I came I to mustn't. visit Lord Marsh. What for? I would very much like to see Lord Marsh, if you please. You don't have to tell you what for. Cheek turning, turning. Oops. Oh, you're Oops. so clumsy. Can you please not? I have to visit Lord Marsh. I didn't mean to do that. My services. Fisher, please allow Doctor Watson to enter. Okay. Good job, Watson. Very good job. Uh, are you? I can hide here. Tells me we must need to hide at some point. Right, what's this? Dear Lord Marsh, thanks for the special education program. My life has been changed completely. I didn't know how to thank you, so I picked you this flower. Thank you. What flower? Anything over here? What's that? Uh, right, so nothing of that. Let's move that across there. Oh, we have a letter. To this day, and by my estimation, the special education program has saved over 200 individuals from the gutter and elevated them to help form and support the critical foundations of our prosperous empire. This is largely thanks to the wisdom and foresight of Lord Marsh, who is the most progressive and wise politician. That I doubt. He has carried out a great deal of work in this field while ignoring critics and any hindrance from his arrogant colleagues, who are so set in their ways. Still getting friggin' vibes from him. Uh, what's this letter? Oh, it's from Lord Marsh. Dear Lord Collins, it's clear to me that we could learn a great many things about running the Empire from those whom we trample underfoot. That's a bit weird. These same people whom we leave destitute and starving in the shadows of our own cities at home or abroad. And we have a rifle. What have we got here? We have traps. We have a bear trap. We have horns. We have hunting pictures. Lord Marsh is a keen hunter. Mint Africa. Looks like a buffalo, a bear, and a lion. Could make another connection. Inveterate hunter. Quarter being club. Another connection there. Lord Marshall's friends are skillful and experienced hunters. I don't think we've got anything else. Uh, we're at RB. We're missing. Oh, hanging crooked. Fingerprints. Let's see how hard to crack this safe is. Oh, okay, are we Doctor, cracking safe? it appears that you were impatient to pay me another visit. Indeed. Will you allow me to examine okay. you? A second opinion, so that the great Lord Marsh does not become the late Lord Marsh. <laughs> well, since you put it that way, very well. Shall I retire to your office, Lord Marsh? Please don't. No, please, Doctor. I insist that you stay. I shall need your assistance. Will you break anything else? I'll try my best. Okay, so he's just disappearing. Okay, uh, we need to hide. We need to hide right now. He's coming. Shit. Look at that. Hide spot. Because I knew there was only one. There's only two doors there, and he's not going in the back garden. I can't believe you can't see me. Did you just come in there for a hissy fit? Are we good? I don't even think we didn't even check the drawers. Yeah. Let's do this safe. Oh shit, we're actually 
Yeah, so let's move that up there. Uh, rotate the safe down and locate the area of clear sound feedback to confirm the correct safe combination. Right. Okay, so we're looking. Ooh. There we go. Yes. Right, so we're looking for the big, the big blip. Is that it? Yeah. Cool. All right. There we go. That's got to be it. What do we have in the safe? And are we just going to leave the safe open so that everyone knows what that we've been in? And uh, letter on the top. Letter from Lord Harrington. I so admire all of these paupers. They seem to me such a breath of fresh air. Communicating with them is such a pleasure. And they are so smart, not like us. Perhaps it was they who should have been lords and we the simple commoners. Lord Harrington. Something really weird about this. I'm getting a weird vibe. This means that the meeting is planned for today. Okay. Dear Lord Marsh. On no November 7th, our meeting starts at Grunston's Oak. I've attached a map to this letter so that you may find the place easily, Lord Collins. And that's that the map. Uh, newspaper article. Newspaper article concerning the invitation? No. Opus list. Oh, okay. Uh, George Hurst was interested in the special education program, but nothing more. George Hurst collected information about the paupers and the lords involved in the special education program. You've got to be collecting information. Those three are there now connected. George Hurst knew about some of the people who had gone missing from the special education program. He was a sniper. Yeah, it's interesting. We've only got one more there, so we can't connect that to anything. Alright. I think we're slowly piecing this together. Let's disappear. Hmm. I'd suggest that your current weakness is perhaps more than a simple case of influenza, Lord Marsh. Okay. <coughs> Where might your companion be, Dr. Ooh. Watson? Okay, can we grab that? Oh, he's busy poking his nose into other people's <laughs> business, I'm sure. Fair, fairly true. Good grab it. You didn't see me take that, My did you? My lord, I'm sorry to interrupt. But I must remind you about your meeting. Is it already time? My apologies, Dr. Watson, but we are expected elsewhere. Okay. Might we offer you a lift? You are no, going thank out. you. It's not I'm really not good. Sure to be fair, I don't think it's a good idea. I agree with Watson I here. Not a good idea to go opinion, out when you're ill. But misery never rests, and I am needed. Well, needed do where, though? Take good care of yourself, Lord Marsh. I'll send you my diagnosis, Dr. Fisher. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Farewell. All right. This is very interesting. I do get the feeling that these lords are hunting these poor people, these paupers. But I don't know where hers comes into it. And I don't know why. I don't know why they're hunting them. Let's have a look. Uh, right, what clues we got? Right, so we've got map fragments, so these two need some work going on them. Grunsog pinpointed on the map that was attached to Lord Marsh's invitation. And Lord Marsh's handkerchief, that's a medical one. Let's check the... Holmes, come here! This is serious. Oh, okay. I guess we're going to do that one first. Yo, Watson, what are you on? doing at my table? I just need to check one thing about Lord Marsh. All right. My intuition tells me that Lord Marsh is hiding something about his disease. His I think cough, it doesn't, doesn't look like influenza. His usage of strong painkillers leads me to believe that he is seriously ill. 
Mm -hmm. uh, right. Let's study it more closely. Let's do that. Uh, are we focusing? Sputum with tiny drops of blood. Mm. Right. So it's... I could take a sample and examine. I don't know why we need to look at it cross. <laughs> Uh, oh, there we go. We're looking for the point. Right, so we'd rub that on the thing. Uh, Let us apply chemicals to color the sample. Okay, so pipette maybe. Um, this chemical should be applied third. Oh, okay. This chemical should be applied second. Alright, so we've got must be from left to right. Carbo fusion. Totally thing. Right. Alright, so that was carbo fusion. So we're looking acid alcohol. Alright. Science eat your heart out. I don't remember any of this. <laughs> uh, right, so last methylene blue. Right. Now, let's examine the coloured sample under the microscope. Science, eat your heart out. Let's just microscope that. Yes. Uh, examine the scene in detail and look for unusual elements. Oh. We have little wormy I things. It appears that Lord Marsh is seriously ill. Right, so it's not just influenza it's actually Holmes, microbacterium this is no a laughing matter it is just as i feared lord marsh is suffering from tuberculosis Ooh, tuberculosis don't, fucking hell yes, that is I serious and Holmes, especially in those days if he is not transferred to a sanatorium as soon as possible and yet both lord marsh and dr fisher are doing their best to hide this fact how interesting but why why indeed watson oh but where did you pick it up though you don't think that Lord Marsh contracted tuberculosis while aiding the poor? How terrible. So well, could could I have, have a done. commitment that I can't possibly keep. Could just be while Holmes, during my absence, please be extremely careful. Okay. This disease is highly contagious. And remember that we have women at home. Yeah, we don't want to be getting to T B and passing it on to the kids. Thank you, Miss Alice. And, well, Until women. later. I'll see you soon, Caitlin. Miss Alice. Where have you been? Oh, dead neighbor. My neighbor lent me a book. She is so kind. I think oh, she cool. likes Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's a good ass <laughs> story, that one. If How you haven't read that one, do read going? it. It's very good. It's going. Dracula? Yes. It's forbidden <laughs> reading at my boarding forbidden school. Forbidden reading. Did you know? Well, well. Yeah, let's have a look. This is so romantic. Yeah. Uh, in its own way, it's a little bit romantic. Right, so let's have a look at the... So we need to check out Grunson's Orc as well in the archives. Uh, newspapers, no. Encyclopedias. I mean, it's an Orc tree, Botany. 100 legendary English Orc. I wonder if... Uh, it's got to be... Grunson's Oak, there we go. Grunson's Oak is a strange and mysterious tree that grows in Epping Forest. The origin of its name is unconfirmed, although there are many legends and fables connected with it. Some people say that over centuries witches performed their ceremonies near this tree, and these rites have assured that whoever may touch the trunk of Grunson's Oak will be cursed for all time. Sounds like a great fucking place. Sounds like a great place. Here it is. Cronston's Oak is in Epping Forest. That's the place indicated on George Hurst's map. All right, so it's in Epping Forest, which means let's look at the map and find let's where try this to find is. The place from the hand-drawn map. Uh, right. Strawberry Hill, Black Bushes, Lawton, Beach House. Is that a beach? Northeastern Railway, Chipping. Uh, hold on. That's a pond there. Is that it? Here it is. 
Done. Right. There it is. I need to hurry if I want to find out what's going on at the forest. Okay, are we off? Father, that boy Wiggins, oh. does he come here very often? He helps occasionally in some of yeah, my he cases. He comes around now and again. I'd like to talk to him. Talk to him? Why? Father, <laughs> back at school there are only girls to talk to, and they are so boring. I'm sure Wiggins has lots of I can see that. stories I can see to tell that. about. W Wiggins has probably London. got some excitement to his so life. Romantic. Uh, reasonable. Kate, oh, reason. Let's go reasonable. That Wiggins hasn't had the most fortunate life. That only makes him more interesting. <laughs> oh, Kate. Oh, God. I'll leave you alone now. <laughs> one of those. It's one of those. Right. Uh, right. So see if we can't find things. Right, imitation and map. George Hurst knew about the meeting between Lord Martian's companions that took place in Epping Forest. He did, because he had it in that. Right, go to Epping Forest. Lord Martian's companions entered the forest that was indicated on George Hurst's map to hold a meeting. So that's what we're doing. We're going to Epping Forest. Or an X. What's that? Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, Epping Forest. I didn't realize we could fast travel from the from the uh, journal. That one I didn't know. <laughs> oh. oh, so this is the opening. We're back at the opening. All right. Been winged. Uh, time to move. I think we need to leave. Let's see how long you can stay Ooh, alive. Okay. Uh, zigzag, zigzag. If you run away from something, ow, shit. All right, so we've got a hunter coming. That is that bottom one stamina. It looks like it is. We need to keep a distance from him. But we need to rest every now and again for stamina. Okay, I get what we're doing. I get what we're doing. I've no idea where we're going though. Ow! Shit, that's a trap. Not good. Go, 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 go. A waste of time. Shut up, go, cover. Run. Fucking run. Uh boulder or thorny bushes boulder. Boulder and trail. We're going this way. Zigzag. 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 Ow. We didn't zigzag enough. I'm nowhere, I'm nowhere. I don't even know who's hunting this. Is it one of the lords? Shit, it's getting fucking close. We need to get some distance. Shady path of rare bushes. Rock by tree descent. Right, we're going down. Fuck it, we're going down this hill. Through here. I hope there's nothing nasty at the bottom. Quiet. Lie flat. Right, so he's not right he's not on me tail right now. We have some time. Where is he? Oh shit, dead body. Hi. Uh, poor guy. This man was killed recently. The body is still warm. Right, Find so him, boys. Find him. Find him. Oh shit, dogs. Fucking hell, I don't like dogs. Ow! Fucking mean bastard! I don't even know if I don't know who's hunting me. She's fucking close. It's quite fucking intense. That's another fucking trap. No, 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 no. We might be fucked. We might be fucked. 
We might be really fucked. We might be really fucked. Cover. Move, 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 move. Jesus. He's right, he's right on top of us. He's right on top of us. I think he got us. He did, he got us. Okay. Watch out for traps. I wasn't looking on the ground for traps. Cover. We're taking, we have to take this next cover. Calm down, calm down, calm down. Right, we're off. Fuck it, I'm running. We're just gonna go, Zig. You missed, bitch. Can we climb inside that tree? No, we can't. Okay. Uh, matted weeds, smell of the swamp, rock slide, big stone, right, we're going left. I'm glad he can't fucking see us. Shoot me through the tree. Uh, right. Cover. Right, use detective mode while being in cover to reveal a safe path through the swamp. Okay, right, so are we going... Let's just hang a left. Whoa, no, 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 no. I don't like that at all. Uh, right. Don't have a choice, we're going left. Right, so, okay. Well, final stretch, I think we're, that's where we're going. Right, so if we go here and we go straight up. Do a little bit, little bit of zags. Ow, you little shit. Don't fall, don't fall in, don't fall in, don't fall in, don't fall in. Eee! Okay, so we're on the run again. Sherlock, don't fucking die, alright? Don't die on me. I'm gonna take a risk. I'm gonna take a risk. Cover, 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 cover. Right, we're going to the tree straight across straight across don't, don't fall don't fall hide please oh another dead body he was killed by a shot to the forehead oh hold on this is Lord Har this is Lord Harrington God, it's Lord Harrington's body. Okay. My health is deteriorating. I need to dress my wound. Um, I don't know whether you're aware of this, Sherlock, but I don't think there's anywhere any you know medical first aid kits around. You might have to find something in this house. Maybe didn't expect to see a house. Okay, uh, we have a lot of blood. The uh, Quartermain Club. This must be Lord Marsh's cabin. It's an interesting cabin in the middle of a swamp. Ooh, this bandage. Will help dress my wound. Thank you. Take that bandage. What else have we got in here? And. Um, in the wardrobe. Oh, Marsh. Breathe, Lord Marsh. It's almost over. Oh. Who are you? George Hurst from the First Lovett Scouts. Oh. Here to deliver justice. George Hurst. Okay, so he is alive. Old soldier. How ironic. Did we refuse you on our special education program? It's true. I was refused. An old wounded soldier is useless to you. But he can still take can he wound? We hunted a lot in these woods, but I didn't expect to become the prey. I Rifle. lived a grand life without any limits set by others. I will die a happy man. Okay, I'm wondering where he got tuberculosis from. 
Okay. Someone's having a good time out there. Prepare to meet your maker. Hold the phone. Uh, real quick, we're just gonna have a look at this. Uh, Trying piece this last ping in pingment. George Hurst intends to kill Lord Marsh for revenge. Revenge. So we've got that connection. So many hundred of the paupers and the lords involved in the special education program. Oh, okay. Uh, Mr. Hurst hunts. George Hurst hunts down paupers and lords in the forest. Lord Marsh and his companions hunt down paupers in the forest. I'm going to say, lords, the lords, I'm going to go with my gut. I'm going to say the lords are the ones that are doing the hunting. And Hurst is not innocent. He's not exactly innocent, but I think he's trying to stop the stop the hunt. I'm gonna go with Lord's hunt. And he's gonna think he's gonna go for revenge. Alright, personal motives. George Hurst intends to kill Lord Marsh to scapegoat for Hurst's own failures, or George Hurst is gonna take the law into his own hands concerning Lord Marsh. But I'm gonna go with me like still gonna go with me gut, because if it's the lords that are hunting the paupers. Then I get the feeling George Hurst is going to take it into his own hands to stop it, and that's what he's doing in the. That's what he's doing here. So I'm going to take that. Oh, that's a big ass one there, right? Marsh hunts down people. Lord Marsh and his companions hunt down people from the special education program. George Hurst only wishes to avenge the victims. Ooh, okay, so we've got a moral choice here. Lord Marsh is a cold-blooded killer who, under the guise of charity, hunted down poor people, put Lord Marsh in jail where he will eventually die from his tuberculosis. Or do we absolve him? Lord Marsh has no likelihood of recovering from his illness, allow him to die peacefully at home while ruminating on his crimes. This is a tough one. You know, this is actually a tough choice. Because if we condemn him, his money and all the goods that's going to help the poor, that all disappears. But if he's absolved allow him to die in his house he can still help the poor you know what fuck it fuck him cold bullet killer cold bullet killer we're gonna condemn him i'm gonna condemn him george lower your rifle please for tom's sake holmes my my an almost worthy opponent tom my Tom, if you've endangered my lad in any way, you no, I haven't. Pay dearly. I assure you that Tom is safe in London safe. with a well-trusted friend. And now it's time to end this. By all means. Yes. George, listen to me. If you're seeking an apt punishment and vengeance, killing Marsh will give him exactly what he wants. He would die knowing that he had fulfilled his life through his absolute control of it. But if you allow Marsh to live and be arrested, you will suffer a punishment far greater than your eye. True. Ever. His ball and chain will be the debilitating tuberculosis. It will drag him painfully and slowly to his demise behind yes, bars. Yes, it will. You're mad. You're both mad. Let's go and find Tom. Not just yet. See, Lord Marsh, you will die here, although not by the gun. You'll die slowly. Don't do this, George. Don't. Detective, take a look here. This is how you became sick, Lord Marsh. Trophies. Your victims who were suffering from the The fuckers taken well. trophies of paupers, of poor people. Justice. Holmes, you cannot fully understand why we helped so many and sacrificed a few. But don't let me die like this. Just kill me now. Uh, 
fuck it, I'm gonna kill him. I don't wanna kill I don't wanna kill uh Hurst. I understand your view, Mr. Hurst. I really do, but I couldn't allow you to continue. If Hurst if Hurst murdered him. See if Hurst murdered him, then he would put off you end up going to jail probably for murdering a lord. I thought best do it of me own accord. I'll do it. I'll fucking kill him. That's very fucking interesting. That's a good in that's a good case. That's very interesting. I'll discuss it more after this. Right. Lord Marsh is a cold blooded killer who does not value the lives of the poor people. He believes that he has the right to choose who will live and who will die. He deserves his fate. Damn right he does. We condemn Lord Marsh. Crews found 18. 76% of people made the same moral choice. Why? Check conclusion. Green, green. I'm assuming that's good. Good, good. Should we accept the decision? Let's accept. Warning, you're about to finish the case. The save files for this case will be removed. Press no if you would like to select another moral choice. Press yes if you agree with the choice you have made and are ready to start a new chapter. Yes. Oh, okay. So it just jumps straight into... So that's just the end and it just jumps straight into the next case. Very interesting. Right, we're going to leave that there. Right guys, so that was the first case, pre tell, of the Sherlock Holmes, The Devil's Daughter. That was very fucking interesting. I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that case. Just the whole gameplay, the deductive reasoning, just everything, the whole thing, whole package. I'm actually really excited to jump into this next case, but we're going to leave that until next week. <laughs> I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoyed this case as much as I have. I do hope you're enjoying the game as well, as much as I am right now. If you have, please leave a comment in the section below. Tell me in the comment section below as well, what choice would you have made? Would you pick the same one as that I, that I picked? Or would you have done it a different way? Or would you come to it? Or did you come to a completely different conclusion? I'm interested to know. Please do tell me. I'll be interested to read them. Anyway, thank you all for watching. If you're new here, feel free to hang around. Come check out some other stuff we've got going on. We would love to have you here. If you're not new, thank you again for the support. It is much appreciated. And you all know what's coming. Please like, share, comment, subscribe and all that chance. And as always, we shall see you on the flip side. Bye bye.